Hi, I'm Connie Romanek, speech language pathologist and co-founder of Communicate. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play a barrier game. Now, barrier games are so much fun and they're incredibly versatile. You could target a multitude of communication skills in this game, whether it be vocabulary building, direction following, understanding and using sentences, uh, working memory, social communication, even speech production articulation skills. So all you really need are two sets of identical objects. Uh, for this video, I'm using two of our Barrison Chairs kits. So I'm ready to go. I got two of everything, but you don't have to use our kits. You can find uh, identical objects, whether it be at the dollar store, around your own house, whatever it may be. So gather two sets of items and get yourself a barrier stand. Now this is the harder thing to come across. You need something that will stand up easily and consistently between the two players. It needs to be wide enough to hide the objects from the two players, yet short enough to allow for that face-to-face -face communication. So that's easier said than done. And if you're having trouble finding a barrier stand, check out our website because we sell these um, for this exact purpose. So you're all set up, you're ready to play. The setup is actually super easy. Now you've got your speaker and your listener. If it's an adult and child, usually I would recommend the adult be the speaker first to model how the activity goes. So you could, again, work at a very simple language of, uh, level of language and, and do something like tell the child to put the small orange bear on the black chair. So you've said it, they listen to it, and then they attempt um, to uh, reenact or make that same arrangement based on how well they understood that information. Now, when they're ready and they're done, you say, hey, ready, ready. Then you remove the barrier. I say reveal and you check to see if the arrangements are the same. If they are, awesome. The speaker did a good job and the listener did a good job. If they're not quite the same, then you have a point of difference to talk about. Oh, I said the orange bear, you put the green bear. There we go, come on orange bear. Now it's the same. Um, so basically it could be that simple or you could make a more complex arrangement telling them all the steps to do as they go along. Maybe you're putting red bear under the white chair and the big orange bear behind the white chair and so on. So maybe you get to a point where you've, you've had enough items in here, you've added enough complexity and you reveal at that point and see how well the speaker and listener did in a clear communication exchange. Um, the other thing you can do if you think that's going to be too much and there are many things that could go wrong before you the big reveal, you could just check every step of the way. So I might do something like put the orange bear on the black chair, check. Now put the white chair beside the black chair, check. Now put the small blue bears on the white chair, check. And you could go about it that way. I find that that is a pretty successful way to go about things and make sure um, the message doesn't get too messed up along the way. Now, there are many opportunities to work on social communication skills here. Like I said, you want to make sure that you are both attending to each other. So just that point of attending to your communication partner is a uh, social communication and then reading each other's facial expressions is another important part so if you see that the child is looking confused or hesitating to make a move you're going to start modeling uh, the recognition of a communication breakdown like hey you look confused and then um, you're going to offer some solutions to repair that breakdown like do you need me to say it again? Are you wondering what color a bear? Did you not hear what size? Whatever it is. So maybe you're going, they're going to want a full repetition. In that case, you just script for them and say, then say, can you say that again? Or if it's just a clarification, what color a bear, you could then script for them. Oh, then ask me, what color did you say? So that's a great way to work on the social communication skills when you're the speaker. And then of course, when it's the child's turn, there'll probably be lots of opportunities um, to identify breakdowns. They're probably gonna be less successful at verbally describing their arrangements and telling you what to do than of course you were. So if they say, put the blue bear beside the chair, here's your opportunity to say, oh, Put the blue bear beside the chair. Do you mean the big blue bear or the small blue bear? So you're asking for clarification. So that's basically how it goes. The children are gonna make some amazing arrangements. I always love to see their creative ideas. They really blow me away and give me some great ideas. 
Um, and if you wanna see how this rolls out in, uh, in real life, you can watch a seed in action. We have two seed in action videos actually on our website. One with me uh, and a child, me working with Finn, and Finn does have struggles or challenges with expressive language, so you're going to see that right away. And you're going to see some of the supports and cues and prompts and everything I use to help him be successful. And then you'll see a video where two children are playing together, so Finn and his sister. And of course, that's going to be more challenging because uh, two children, um, they don't have the skills that an adult uh, player would have in terms of of uh, providing cues and supports and prompts and scaffolding and all of that. So please check out their videos and uh, consider giving this game a try. If you already have two of our kits, you, the only thing you need to get is a barrier and you're ready to go to take things um, to no limits, basically. The sky is the limit and your imagination is the limit. So I hope you have fun. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.